TV. Ghostling TV, Marie J. I'm going to talk about six horror films that are based on real life experiences. Yes, these events took place in real life to real people. The first one I was most fascinated with was The Exorcism of Emily Rose, which is a 2005 film that features Jennifer Carpenter, who plays Emily in the movie. Now, Emily is possessed by demons, and she's experienced several different exorcisms to try to rid her of what she was experiencing. The actual character of Emily is based on the real experience of a German woman by the name of Annalise Michelle, who at the time was only 16 years old when she was experiencing these demonic encounters in this possession. The exorcisms continued. However, they were unsuccessful by the time that she turned 23, where she resulted in an unfortunate death due to starvation. Winchester, very intriguing movie that was released in 2018, and it centrally focused around this gigantic mansion that was built in San Jose, California, has 160 rooms, 47 stairways, 2,000 doors, a lot of it leading to absolutely nowhere. Now, the storyline behind this um, is about a woman by the name of Sarah Winchester, who was one of the former owners of the property, who was told and instructed by a medium that she had to construct this giant house. And her husband, William Winchester, was the head of an army. And when people started dying at the barrel of Winchester, she was told that their souls needed to live on. So they had to live on in this house that she constructed. So she built this home and started having a lot of paranormal activity go on with it, a lot of ghostly encounters, and she had to um, protect all of the ghosts that were in the house from leaving. So that's why a lot of the locations of the house lead to absolutely nowhere. Very, very, very creepy location. Well, this 1982 original film of Poltergeist, the movie produced by Steven Spielberg, is based on a true story and it's centrally focused around a family that has some extreme paranormal encounters and disruptions now the movie kind of hones in a little bit more on a particular character by the name of carol ann who is the youngest daughter of the family and has some type of communication and connection to these energy forms that are tied to this property. The house itself uh, in the movie was built on top of a burial ground and that is kind of like the central hub of a lot of those paranormal disruptions. Now, I know you're probably wondering if there is actually a family that has a little girl that experienced all of these paranormal connections and encounters. Not entirely, however, the film is actually centered around a family by the name of the Herman family who lived in Seaford, Long Island, New York. And they had this experience in 1958. It wasn't as extreme as the actual movie, but it gained enough attention to where the media started taking note of it as well as the local law enforcement. Now, some of the things that this family was experiencing were hearing disembodied voices, things moving around their property, and most notorious report was they were sitting around having dinner and the bottle tops on the bottles, they kept hearing them pop off and pop all around the house. So the wife calls her husband, the husband kind of is a little like, hey, it's in disbelief of what's going on until he starts experiencing it for himself. So they called in some parapsychologists, they called in some priests, and uh, soon those uh, disbeliefs started turning into believers when they themselves started having experiences in the house of their own. Now we cruise over to one of my personal favorites, this 2013 film called The Conjuring. Now there's been many sequels to this movie, but this version is always the one that captivated me the most. Now this film features 
two paranormal investigators, a clairvoyant medium by the name of Lorraine and a ex-police officer, also demonologist by the name of Ed. So it's Ed and Lorraine Warren who take on this case, um, um, demonic possession to a family that um, experiences in Harrisonville, Rhode Island. And the family is the Perron family. It was a husband and wife and five daughters that moved into this 14 room farmhouse and started experiencing some weird shifts. Some items were getting placed in areas that they knew they had not positioned these things. And there was dirt and piles being centered in the floor after the, after the, the wife would sweep the floor. And there's just weird things going on with this house, like crazy things going on with this house. So the events got so severe that this family called in these mediums to help them. Not only did they come to their property to assist and help them um, see what they were experiencing, they actually were overcome by these energies as well, which is very interesting. Uh, a lot of people that started to do the research on the family, including the wife, found very intriguing information that there was a previous tenant back in the early 1800s by the name of Bathsheba, who was the mistress of the house and is known to be the one that caused a lot of those demonic encounters. Now, you all remember this movie, Child's Play, this 1988 film that features a doll named Chucky that was possessed and went around killing people, okay? This is actually a true story. Now, this takes place in Key West, Florida, and there was a boy by the name of Robert who was gifted a doll that he named Robert. And this boy was so attached to the, to the doll to the point where even when he died, this doll was right by his side. Now, some believe that this doll took on Robert's spirit and was seen walking and wandering around the house even after the boy's death and wandering and moving about different areas of the town. Now, they took this doll and they put this doll in a museum in Key West. It is currently still in the museum. And you can go to the museum and actually see the doll. And there's actually a lot of people who send letters to the doll, who try to communicate with the doll and try to have a relationship with this actual doll. So yes, the Chucky doll is based on a real life story. Now, some of you may be familiar with this 1988 film called The Blob. It's a horror film that had a giant outer space mass of goo that took over this town, started expanding and growing and easing its way through the sewers and into people's homes and killing them. It was eating them alive. Now, this big mass of goo was actually based on a true story. In Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, back in the 1950s, there were two on guard uh, police officers and they were out on the streets, just kind of patrolling the area. And all of a sudden, one of the officers looked up at a phone booth and noticed that a large mass fell out of the air. Well, the mass started moving and it was glowing and it started moving down the phone booth all the way towards the field. So the two officers spotted it. They called for backup and they followed it into the field until the whole giant gooey mass just disappeared. Yes, the blob was based on a true story. Follow me, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Ghostling TV to get more updates and to watch all of my interesting films about my paranormal encounters, my paranormal investigation, and just interesting feedback that I give on all of my videos. Like, subscribe, follow, share. Ghostling TV.